did. Um, but again, very uh, very tricky matchup because the the, uh, the reanimator deck has a lot of more mana acceleration than it did in the past. So it can certainly kind of jump uh, out of the gates relatively quickly as well. You can see both of our players sitting here ready to begin. Ben Weinberg on the left with Naya Blitz, Alex Gonzalez with Junk Reanimator. And again, Alex Gonzalez is the higher seed here, so he will be able to choose who plays and draws, and I would expect him to want to play first. I mean, the only reasons to go the other direction are to try to prove something. Yeah, if you want to prove a point, you want to showboat. But looks like Alex is going to play. He's deciding whether or not he wants to keep, and he does. And we have turn one, Absent Pilgrim. So exactly the kind of start that Alex wanted. He has a mana accelerant to play. And on the other side, we have Ben Weinberg with the Cavernous Souls on Human, casting a Boros Elite. Uh, so again, pretty good start for Alex so far. Uh, he doesn't have to contend with a Champion of the Parish or a Experiment One, which is really the... Obviously, Boros Elite can get pretty big, but it's not going to be attacking for three potentially on turn two, as likely as a Champion of the Parish or um, Experiment One. So we have a turn two Mulch and just a Temple Garden for Alex. Whereas Ben now has a second Cavern of Souls. I mean, you would almost think that this is Perfector mana, but because of the existence of cards like Gore Clan Rampager, um, Giant Growth, Searing Spear, this means that he can certainly cast any of his creatures, but other effects, he's going to be uh, at least two land away from being able to use a Gore Clan Rampager's ability. Yeah, it would be a little bit awkward if he has a Flint of Four in his hand. Um, but oh, here we have. So. Uh, Sometimes you think it's going to be difficult to activate Battalion on turn two, but not with not if you have Burning Tree Emissary. I mean, I mean a, a mulligan on the this game, he still gets the Perfector opening. I mean, I do think that is the best possible opening for this deck. I mean, maybe Experiment 1 might champion, be better. Champion. Champion better yet? Champion or Experiment 1, you, you attack for seven instead of... Well, no, I, I guess ch Champion probably is the card you want, but either way, Alex has the answer in Fiend Hunter, which is... Uh, Pretty good start here. He takes. Oh, interesting. He takes the lightning mower. Um, and uh, I'm surprised by that. Maybe he's afraid of. Because uh, the lightning mower could actually um, get eaten by the fiend hunter. But he takes the lightning mower, so now Ben doesn't really have a good attack here unless he has another lightning mower. But even still, that would just die to the fiend hunter. So Ben might just have to play another creature here and pass. Does he have, uh, oh, it looks like he does have a Searing Spear. So he could cast Searing Spear on the Fiend Hunter and then get in for another seven if he chooses. And he does have a Sacred Foundry in his hand to Excellent. cast the Searing Spear. Uh, looks like he has a Thalia as well. He's trying to determine what's the most, um, most amount of damage I can get in this turn. So Fiend Hunter doing a good job of holding down the fort so far. Are we gonna see a Searing Spear? Yes, Searing Spear and Fiend Hunter. Lightning Lord comes into play, Soul Bond is triggered, and Ben attacks for seven again. <laughs> How incredible. If you think about this, it's turn three here, and he's already attacked for 14. Yeah, Burning Tree Emissary. Uh, you know, it's just unbelievable. It looks just like, it looks like such an innocuous little card, but it's just so powerful. And we have the Unburial Rites. And uh, Angel Serenity. Take that, everybody. So, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will take your creatures. So he hit an Angel Serenity off that Mulch on turn two, and now was able to get in it, use an Embarry Rice to get into play. So Ben, uh, despite the fact that he was able to attack for 14 on turns three and four, uh, or on turns two and three, rather, still uh, in a little bit of trouble here. He's got four power in play, and he has to contend with a Angel, and whatever other action that Alex Gonzalez can muster here. Thalia will help um, slow that down a little bit, but there is still hiding amongst all that land an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, Alex has another Embarrowrites in his hand, so he could uh, actually flash back the Embarrowrites in his graveyard to get that Fiend Hunter to take care of that Thalia or possibly the Experiment one. Um, and maybe he, maybe he decides he wants to start attacking with that Angel Serenity. So it looks like he's going to do that. He's going to Flashback, Embarrowrites, does he have a better target or is it coming for a Fiend Hunter? Can't see what the other targets are. Yep, Fiend Hunter's gonna come into play. Are we gonna take out the Thalia or are we gonna take out the Experiment one? Looks like he's gonna take out the Thalia. Um, but 
and he chooses to attack with the Angel Serenity, dropping Ben to 13. So Ben, uh, ben doesn't have Selesnya Charm in his deck, so he doesn't have a way to deal with the Angel Serenity game one. We're going to see a Mayor come down here, and because the Mayor uh, pumps all humans and Experiment 1 is a human, Ben can feel free to attack. And another Experiment 1 comes down. You probably recognize Ben Weinberg if you've been a um, loyal viewer of Star City Games. He has a great number of many money fin finishes, some championships here in the Star City Games Open Series, but uh, you might not recognize Alex Gonzalez unless you've been watching for a while. He was the StarCityGames.com Louisville Standard Open Champion with Cawblade, and today he's choosing another boogeyman, Junk Reanimator. So, tight spot for Alex here. Um, he has the Angel Serenity, he has the Fiend Hunter in play. Mayor kind of changes things up a little bit. He has to he has to try to get some action going. He might have a uh, mulch in his hand, and we know he has at least one, looks like two Umberia rights, but no real gas in his grave right to go for it. So it looks like we're going to get a mulch here, perhaps, or we can cast this? an Umberia rights on maybe... I can't see what the other cards in his graveyard are. Are we just going to get another Pilgrim? Oh, so... Oh, <laughs> Resto. Resto Angel, okay. So, are we going to blink the Fiend Hunter here? Yep. Okay, so Fiend Hunter gets Let's blinked. Let's reset this, uh, and take your mayor. You can have this Thalia back. And, uh, yes, because Thalia is going to come into play. Experiment 1 triggers and evolves. The question I think that's being asked is, is the mayor around to allow the evolution of the Experiment ah, 1 yes. or not? Because Experiment is technically a 2-2 because of Mayor of Averbrick. And uh, yeah, I believe it should trigger, though, because the Thalia would be a 3-2 anyway, correct? I think you're correct. Thalia will be a 3-2 when uh, it's coming back for this brief moment. Yeah, so I'm not sure how the timing works, but either way, I think the Experiment 1 should still get a plus 1, plus 1 counter. But we'll see here. The judges are conferring. It's one of those tricky interactions that you uh, don't expect to have to deal with. Uh, but it uh, looks like they're both the judges are determining whether or not the experiment one will get a plus one, plus one counter. It's interesting here. Alex, you know, he has the Restoration Angel. He's uh, basically swapping a Thalia for a Mayor of Averbrook. But uh, it's... He's still not in a bad position, but he, the, the unfortunate thing is he can't really attack yet. So uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of a frustrating position to be in right now. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so yeah, the mayor gets taken. Thalia comes into play. Experiment 1 does get a plus 1, plus 1 counter. Boom. Um, it looks like he's choosing to attack and being at 4 life. That's so, a bold That's risky because I, I believe a top-deck Lightning Mauler would uh, be able to win the game for Ben here. But or a Searing Spear, I believe. Searing Spear uh, doesn't have access to green, so he can't cast Giant Growth, so Giant Growth won't do it. Um, I mean, he's, uh, what is he, putting it on one card draw here? Is he going to be able to win next turn? Uh, no, he won't even be able to win next turn because No, he could, he could attack for eight. Uh, oh. So, mayor. so, yeah, I think it's still fine. Um, he will end up losing a he will lose a fiend hunter, but he'll only drop to one. So he's attacking with uh, nine power worth of creatures. They have to. So he's going to lose his fiend hunter, but it doesn't matter. Restoration angel survives and will be able to attack for eight in the yep, one. Exactly, yeah. so, um, exposed himself a little bit. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exposed himself a little bit to lightning molar there, but uh, in the end, it didn't matter. Ben didn't draw it, and Alex wins game one. That was a really um, interesting play. Alex's choice there ends up meaning that uh, he goes to one life. But uh, aside from the first game win here from Alex Gonzalez, we are going to have one other winner out there, as we always do at the Star City Games Open Series events. We give away Star City Games Premium, I think a, a little prize that you should be very happy to get. If you're not already reading Premium, I would say get on that. If you care about magic, one of the things that you really should be getting is as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. Star City Games Premium is a great way. Great articles, great videos, and even if, let's say, you're a curmudgeon, I can think of some curmudgeonly magic players I know who's like, ah, there's never anything good in a magic article. Well, the thing is, is that you'll go to an event, 
and you'll say to yourself, huh, my opponent, he's playing exactly Jerry T's list from this week's event. And you might know his sideboard, his mm -hmm. sideboard plan, Things like that can win you matches, so you should be on it. Not only that, you get, those, you get those sweet, sweet editorial comments from Cedric Phillips <laughs> that people love. Yeah. <laughs> What's not to like? So, how you get involved in this, we'll ask you a trivia question. If you respond with the correct answer on Twitter with the hashtag SCG Premium, you can see it right there, one lucky person amongst those will get the prize. And so the question that I am going to ask for this Star City Games premium giveaway, there was in our top eight a four color control deck and it did not make the top four. What color did it not play? What color did our top eight four color control deck not play? Now, you don't have to give us this answer in Nephilim colors. No, just tell us which color they didn't play. Make it simple. There's and only five colors. Yep. Hashtag SCG Premium. Make sure you have that on your tweet. And we'll come back at the end of this match and let you know who has won six free months of Star City Games Premium. Meanwhile, Alex Gonzalez and Ben Weinberg going to game two. Alex uh, has in his sideboard a couple different cards that are going to be of use here. Thrag Tusk. Number four, hiding out in the sideboard, is probably going to make a appearance along with two Voice of Resurgence, largely for their safe hold elite um, speed bump-like quality, but that's just fine. I also would expect to see two Abrupt Decays come in to uh, chop away at some of Ben Weinberg's early creatures. And then, I'm not sure, well, how do you feel about these other cards, Obsidot and Deathrite Shaman? Do you think that those are reasonable or not reasonable? Um, I don't really like the Deathrite Shaman in this matchup. Uh, it's basically just a one-two, especially because you know Ben has three Tormart scripts in the sideboard. You know, again, because this is top top four, you have perfect information. You have your opponent's deck list. You know what hate cards they're bringing in. I think the fact that he knows Ben's bringing in three Tormart scripts, it makes it the reanimation strategy a little difficult. So I think he's going to try to shave some of those numbers. I don't think you can really have afford to have four Angel Serenity in your deck because in all likelihood you're going to need to actually cast them. So seven man is a a tough sell for against a Boros, uh, a, an aggressive Naya deck. Same thing with the Embarrow Rites. You want to shave some of those numbers, I think. I don't think you need to cut all four, but you definitely don't want four in your deck against three Tormat Crypts. Same thing with the Death Rite Shaman in his deck. And I also don't think the Sin Collector in his main deck is, is very powerful in this matchup. So I would expect them to want to bring in the Abrupt Decay, the Garrick's, the Garrick the Relentless, just because it's another way to sort of make chump blockers as well as kill cards like uh, Thalia. Um, Voice of Resurgence, like you mentioned, is a great blocker. I think you want that fourth Thrag Tusk. Some of the Bloodline, you know, not an efficient removal spell, but sometimes you can um, get pretty lucky by getting, if they go a, a hand of like Experiment 1, Experiment 1, or get multiple creatures of the same type in play. And possibly Curse of Death's Hold. I mean, obviously, uh, it's five mana, so m it might be a little too slow on the draw. Um, maybe he brings it on the, on the play if he loses this game, but Curse of Death's Hold is one of those cards that can definitely... Um, shut down a large percentage of uh, Ben's deck. So I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see that one make play, show, show up. So it almost sounds like you're, you're feeling like he's going to become um, transforming into just junk with maybe yeah. a touch of reanimator, maybe? But the, the thing is, the, the, reanima the great thing about the reanimation deck is it doesn't need to reanimate to win. Obviously, he needed the reanimation in that game because, you know, uh, Ben's deck is just so fast and Alex has no removal. So one of the only ways he can really... Uh, survive an early onslaught is getting an angel surrounding to play very early but after board alex does have more removal spells he has more roadblocks and voice of resurgence mm -hmm. so I, I think it's reasonable for him to sort of hedge some of those reanimation numbers fearing the tormont scripts and just becoming more of a true control deck does uh does ben try to next level it and not play the crypts I don't think you can afford to do that <laughs> because uh, it's un uh, it's unlikely alex boards out all of his umbrella rights and you just can't afford to lose to a quick angel. So right, right. I think I think you need to bring in those crypts. I think you, I think Ben also wants the fourth Thalia. But beyond that, I don't think there's that much he needs in his deck. Experiment one for Ben Weinberg. Meanwhile, in the other match, uh, we have a winner, John Milner, not the, for the match. John Milner wins the first game against Derek Roper. So Naya Humans wins on the draw in the other bracket. So I guess maybe being on the draw is No, I think Milner was on the play. Milner was the four seed. Oh yeah, yeah. Milner, Milner was on the play. Yeah, there we so, go. My bad, my bad. In, oh, in both in both matchups, whoever was on the play may have won the first game. There we go. Yeah, I bet backwards. So yeah, as you said, both people on the play won. And uh, if we saw that last match, imagine if Ben Weinberg had been first. I think that that would have probably been enough for the game to go the other way. Yeah. 
It, it, oh, definitely. But I mean, he was attacking for 14 on turn three. So, um, yeah, and and Alex was able to get the Angel Serenity to play just in time, and he barely got there. So, yeah, if, if Ben's on the play that game, he definitely wins. Thalia, one of the best weapons in this fight for Ben Weinberg. Uh, yeah, Thalia definitely um, slows things down, makes it difficult for him to cast cards like Mulch, Grizzly Savage, um, even Abrupt Decay. So, but thankfully, Alex does have a voice of resurgence, which is one of those roadblocks that we were talking about earlier. So we have a champion of the parish, which comes down, and uh, mayor. Boom. Here they come. Roadblock what? So are we going to see voice just try to slow things down a bit? Or it looks like Alex does have a fiend hunter in his hand, so could potentially. He accepts all of the damage. Does he have a third lane? Question. So it looks like he does have a temple garden and a cavern of souls. Not a lot of removal, though. It looks like he does have a Garrick. Um, so we have a Cavern of Souls. Not sure what it's naming. We'll get that for you in a second. But um, Cavern of Souls comes down, and uh, he's able to cast Fiend Hunter, and he takes out the Mayor of Everbrick. Surprising, he takes out the Mayor. It looks like he does have a Garrick in his hand. So, oh, Cavern of Souls name's Angel. So the Fiend Hunter comes down taking Ma Mayor uh, instead of Athalia, which is surprising because, granted, the Mayor pumps the other creatures, but Mayor itself can't really afford to attack, and it means that you can't cast your Garrick next turn. So I would have expected him to make, possibly take the Thalia just so he can play the uh, Mayor next turn and actually use it to kill. Uh, I, I, you cast the Garrick next turn and use the Garrick to kill the Mayor instead of just stealing it with the Fiend Hunter. But um, still, though, uh, he does have two creatures in play. Boom. Fiend Hunter ends up getting uh, Searing Speared. And all three creatures come over once again. I mean, I think we might see a chump block here finally from this voice. If he takes this hit, that's four plus uh, three plus three. That's ten damage. Wow. So Alex, not much he can do here. He didn't really get the kind of start he needed. Uh, so we're going to have a chump block here. And he's going to take six, dropping to six. And he gets an elemental token, which unfortunately is just a one-one right now. I mean, he wanted to have it be a, a Pokemon, but I guess he's having to use that elemental. And Thalia is playing a really important role in this game. He can't cast Garrick, and uh, everything else in his hand is very overcosted. So uh, even though Thrag Tusk was sitting there, couldn't quite uh, get there soon enough. So Alex Gonzalez loses game two very quickly to Ben Weinberg, and uh, Thalia really uh, played a huge role there. Absolutely. If that Garrick came down, would have been able to, to kill the experiment one, kill the mayor, could have changed things around possibly. But, uh, and again, it shows you, you know, being on the play is huge because uh, Alex could have played the voice of resurgence and then he could have played the fiend hunter. And then suddenly Ben, if, if he tried to searing spare the fiend hunter, he doesn't have nearly enough cr creatures to follow up the attack with. So uh, it's pretty unfortunate for Alex. But uh, again, he'll be on the play this time. So um, maybe he'll get one of those mana accelerants in the play and jump ahead of the curve a little bit more. In the other match, uh, the Milner and Roper match, we have the exact same situation happen. The player on the play has won. That means Derek uh, Roper has won game two, and they are going on to a game three. And so far, our prediction earlier was that the match would be in largely uh, have a, a strong correlation to who was on the play. And in these two matches, the other match in the other bracket is also Reanimator versus Naya Blitz. The player on the play has won every game. Yeah, no, no one has uh, managed to break serve yet. So we'll see if uh, if Ben is able to do that or uh, if a um, if Derek is able to do it in the other match. But uh, yeah, play, being on the play first, you can just see it's so important because all these games come down to these critical turns. Um, just because the Naya Blitz deck is just capable of putting out so much pressure early on. So uh, we see Ben doing a little bit more sideboarding for game three. I'm confident he brought in the third Thalia from his sideboard. Um, but what else do you think he might have brought in from, uh, from that board? Well, I, you know what's interesting? There's nothing in his sideboard I think is really um, that I want. He has two pacifisms, two electricery. He might bring in the electricery to kind of um, deal with the mana creatures. I don't know if that's something his deck really wants to be doing, though. Um, 
Same thing with the Ray of Revelations, being shot on first blade. I think this is one of those matchups, though, where he changes how he sideboards depending if he's on the player draw. So the Tormod's Crypts, I can see him possibly not bringing them in if he's on the play because he can put enough pressure on Alex where Alex can't get to that critical reanimation turn anyway, so it doesn't matter as much. But if he's on the draw, Alex can reasonably reanimate something on turn four or five because Ben's critical turn is usually four. Like Ben can't kill someone on turn three unless he gets really, really lucky. So Ben definitely needs those Tormod scripts more on the draw than he would on the play. So I could see him maybe not boarding them in for game two, but boarding them in for game three. And in that game, uh, or in this sideboarding, he definitely did change up his board. Um, I didn't see how many cards, but he has changed configurations since his last game. Yeah, my guess is the Thalia definitely comes in and possibly the three Thormod scripts for, for, for game three because even on the because he's in the draw. Uh, Giant Growth isn't particularly great in this matchup, so those two can come out. But beyond that, there's not that many cards. He, he, he probably doesn't want to dilute his deck that much. He has four frontline medics. Those are probably the weakest creatures in his deck against in this matchup. So I would venture to guess maybe two frontline medics and two Giant Growths come out for those four cards. We're going to see what happens here in this critical game. Three, Alex Gonzalez, a uh, reanimator player here against Ben Weinberg, Playing the beatdown role here with Naya Blitz. And I could tell, it looks like Alex's hand is, is one of those frustrating hands. He has an Avacyn program, he has a Fiend Hunter, he has a Garrick, but it doesn't look like he has a lot of mana to work with. So, looks like he's going to take a chance and, and go for it. And Ben Mulligans. Yep, I mean, uh, Ben Weinberg, he uh, mulliganed in game one as well and still had this ridiculous draw where he was able to get 14 damage on the table by turn three insufficient to win that game but he can certainly still put out incredible pressure with uh despite mulliganing with his deck yeah it's and it all comes down to the fact because of uh the fact that his one drops are just so powerful um champion of the parish um experiment one even boros elite they can all effectively attack for for three on turn two or three so you're doing a lot of damage early on just because of those one drops and br again burning tree emissary uh, having a one drop in burning tree emissary suddenly it doesn't matter if you mulligan you're, you're threatening uh, seven damage uh, on turn three. So um, one of those decks that you don't want to mulligan, but you can afford to sometimes because of the fact that you can put in a lot of pressure early on. If you're just joining us, Osip and I have been watching uh, some awesome magic, blistering fast games between Ben Weinberg and Alex Gonzalez. And in the other bracket, John and Derek, that's John Milner and uh, Derek Roper, also blistering fast. Both of these matches in game three, Ruben Bressler, you can see there on the right covering the match. He's trying to type so quickly just to catch up, but. Oh, okay, so this is the hand. <laughs> it was a bunch of coming to play tap lands. So he does have the Pilgrim. And uh, are we gonna have a Mulch or Grizzly Savage here? Because he plays Temple Garden untapped. And we have double oh. Pilgrim, okay, so. Trickery, Alex, trickery, Alex trickery. managed to draw exactly what he wants in this matchup. It looks like he has an Abrupt Decay, a Fiend Hunter, and a Garrick. So he's sitting in pretty good shape so far, and especially because Ben didn't even have a one drop. Yeah. So this is one of those situations where if he has an Elect Trickery, <laughs> it'd be pretty <laughs> solid. But doesn't I mean, look like he has the Elect Trickery. And I mean, one of the things is that sometimes the best card you can possibly draw is a card that you might not even want to bring in but it could be so good sometimes. We yeah. talked before about whether Electricery was good or not. It certainly has applications, and it's also certainly a card that you might be sad you have. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see uh, Garrick? Yep. Oh, there Garrick it is. comes down. This is, this is great. This is the exact situation you want. Obviously, Garrick isn't amazing against hyper-aggressive decks, but this is a perfect situation for it. Um, ben just doesn't have enough of an offense to really threaten Garrick right now. So Al's can make a chump blocker, and then he can also threaten to kill any of the smaller creatures Ben plays on the following turns. And you could see there that Ben does have a Tormod script in his hand, but it's not really going to be that relevant um, in this game because Alex's plan isn't about reanimating creatures, it's about generating a dominant board presence and playing a lot of really powerful cards that are just overmatched, uh, that Ben's deck is just overmatched by. I mean, he's essentially turning from being a deck that has an explosive combo in the form of cheating a huge creature into play into instead being a uh, pretty much a straight up mid-range control deck that's just going to say, you know what? You're not gonna be able to get through this huge wall of, uh, of everything I'm gonna put down. 
So looks like we have a double block there with uh, respect. With, yeah, with an Avison Pilgrim and three lands in play. Um, Alex doesn't feel like he needs that Avison Pilgrim anymore. So we're gonna have a double block. And uh, I like this play actually because let's say the worst thing that can happen is maybe a Gorklan Rampager, but then you effectively waste this turn. And Searing Spirit takes out the Garrick, so that's unfortunate. In the other bracket, we have someone breaking serve. Derek Roper with Reanimator. Junk Reanimator advances to the finals, defeating John Milner with Naya Blitz. So Alex does have a Thrag Tusk. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a fifth man anymore because he sacrificed that Avacyn Pilgrim. So he does have a Restoration Angel, though, that can come down. Let's, and Ben kind of sniffs it out. Doesn't look like he wants to attack with that Boros Elite. Abrupt Decay <laughs> takes care of Frontline Medic. And Alec, Ben is down to one card. An Angel of Serenity drawn by Alex Gonzalez. Yeah, and I bet Alex kind of regrets <laughs> using that Avacyn Pilgrim now. But again, I, I think it was a reasonable play. Um, and, Lightning Mauler. Wow, we see uh, with the Mauler, the creation of the army. And uh, they're best friends forever. Experiment and 1 and Lightning Mauler, they come on in and they're going to march into an angel. Angel, Restoration Angel comes down. Picture some humans coming in and from the clouds, an angel. And uh, yeah, let's see what gets taken out. I like taking out the Experiment 1 right here. Or maybe the Lightning Mauler. I, I mean... You can take out... Uh, let's see what he chooses to block here. You, you don't want that Lightning Mauler to do any more damage. So, Boris Elite gets eaten up. He does, still has a Fiend Hunter in his hand. Alex drops to 14, so he can cast Fiend Hunter. If he draws a fifth land, he can drop that uh, Thrag Tusk. Is that a Grizzly Salvage? A he Grizzly Salvage. So that'll help him find the land he needs. <laughs> if he finds a, uh, another land, he can still cast the Avacyn Pilgrim this turn. Wow. The land on Burial Rites, Voice of uh, Resurgence, Abrupt Decay, which he cannot take. And, and he has a Cavern. I think there's two land in there. Yeah, so if he takes the Cavern here, he can name uh, Angel, Beast, whatever he chooses, and he can still cast Fiend Hunter this turn to take out the Experiment one, or uh, more likely the Lightning Mauler. So it looks like he's gonna, yeah, I wouldn't take the Overrun to him. You don't wanna take the damage, I don't think. You don't need it. He's like, okay, it's one of these two. Give yeah. me a second to think about it. <laughs> uh, and again, he did reveal an Umbrella Rights, but unfortunately, Ben does have a Tormor's Crypt in place, so it's not really gonna be that relevant right now. But uh, as the Cavern, let's see what he names, possibly Beast or Angel. I mean, maybe Hippo at this point. <laughs> Is he going to cast the Fiend Hunter this turn? I like casting the Fiend Hunter. You don't want to let things get out of control. Oh, wow. But he, says, oh, he says pass. Okay, so uh, hopefully Ben doesn't have anything too powerful right here. Frontline Medic would be okay. Maybe. So just a pass. Nothing, nothing for Ben. And we have a draw. It looks like another angel of some sort. Can't tell if it's Serenity or Restoration. In comes Restoration Angel. And here comes Big Daddy Thrag Tusk. Boom. Bringing Alex back up to 19 and giving him a hefty blocker for Ben's side. Ben, so, ben Weinberg now in a position where um, I think I think he, he's in real trouble. Yeah, Very it, few cards exist that I think will pull him out of this There's one. really not much he can he can do to pull out of this one. And Alice can definitely... I, I don't see why he wouldn't want to drop the Fiend Hunter now. Um, I don't think there's anything else. He, he just... You want to get rid of that Battalion. You can... I would probably take out the Experiment one. Or I'd, I'd take out the Boros Elite because you don't want to unsold on the... Uh, oh, now, now I would definitely take out the <laughs> Lightning Mauler. Uh, so uh, now Fiend Hunter should probably come down. Or it looks like he's, well, he's just going to pass he again. Might have a resto. He has a resto, yeah. So. And Ben Weinberg ben sees the Weinberg. writing on the wall. Ben okay. Weinberg falls 2-1 to Alice Gonzalez. And again, you know, uh, Derek Roper was able to break serve in the other match, but Alex Gonzalez was able to hold his serve, um, showing that uh, both players were able to, uh, both reanimator players were able to advance into the finals. We're going to have a reanim all reanimator finals.